Whiskey Jason here, a whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Westward American Single Malt Whiskey, True Northwest Single Barrel Selection. Yay! So this is a Kirsch Import Germany exclusive and it was picked by a fellow YouTuber in Germany. His name here, you can read it, is Patrick Aluvala. His father was from India, and um, he is part of the team called Malt Mariners. They, Leon uh, and Patty, Patty Patrick, they both now work in the whiskey industry, which is really cool. They went from a from YouTubers into um, the industry, and um, I just love it when that can happen. And um, he got to pick this bottle, or this barrel, better said. It's a store pick, but it's actually an importer pick for Germany. So this is whiskey base number 199857. This is a single barrel selection, dis distilled 2016, bottled 2021, cast number of 568. And it's bottled at 62.5%, which is, in my opinion, a lot. Um, that is a little bit more than I would have expected, to be honest. All right, so um, there are new rules and regulations here in America, which will take effect. I'm not sure if it's going to be April 1st or whenever. Um, they have to do with our new words about barrel proof, and they have to do about the, the things also called here. Um, it is now called, whoops, I scrolled too far, sorry. It is called, come on computer, think and don't screw up here. Original proof, original barrel proof, or entry proof. That means it has to be in the bottle the same that it actually entered into the cask. Now we do have something else called barrel proof, or in a Europe cask strength. Now that means that it actually has to be then um, with, after they measure it for tax purposes, they can still dilute it down two percentage points, which I think is a lot, um, actually too much in my personal opinion. All right, so before I go into a little bit of the distillery, what do we have here? My comparison bottle is going to be this, westward. This is 45%. Um, over here in Germany, that's really the question of the day here. So this cost with 45%, this is a 65 uh, euro bottle. This is a 85 euro bottle. We also have these two puppies, the um, Pinot Noir for 79 euros. And we have the stout cask finish. So this is going to be like a, um, a screenshot. Th thumbnail. Very good. So this has a double gold. These have golds for some reason. Um, and it's 100% malted barley. Now, a tiny little bit about the company because I think that's always interesting. So originally founded as Housed Spirits Distillery in 2004 here by, I can't read and pour at the same time, Christian Krokstadt. Sounds like he's very Danish or Swedish. And later um, taken over by the CEO and co-founder Thomas Money. Westward is a leader of American uh, craft distilling in the anchor, and the anchor of Portland, um, Oregon's famed distillery row. Very good. So it has now expanded in 2015 sixfold. So that's very, very good. And it's the largest craft distiller on the West Coast. So, um, da, 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 da. what else? In addition to its flagship Westward American Single Malt Whiskey, the Portland, Oregon distillery is the home of other award-winning products developed by House Spirits, including uh, the Krogstadt Aquavit, the Vosteed uh, Vodka, and the Casca Magdalena Rum. So, very, very good. And for some reason, I think um, the Adju... Yeah, you invested a little bit in them with their distilled ventures here. Good, good job. And the nose, I really like this. This is um, uh, um, the, the, the sugar of the malted barley is evident. There's a honey, there's a black breakfast tea moment. It's almost like an iced tea. 
and the 62.5% are almost basically non-existent. Every once in a while I get a whiff of alcohol, but no problem. Now the problem is this is not overly complex. It's there and it's good. Now would I place this in bourbon territory? Definitely not. Would I place this in uh, single malt scotch territory? Definitely not. So what does it smell like? It smells like a European single malt. What do I mean by European? I mean British, English Euro, um, single malt. Uh, we have Coswolds. We have a lot of other people now on the, on, uh, in England making good stuff. There's actually a renaissance of the um, English whisking, whiskey distilling scene. This could have been French single malt. There's some Amagnac and some other good things out there. It could almost be a German single malt. And that's my problem. I don't really think this has any real resemblance to a good single malt from Scotland yet. Hmm. Might could also be an Australian single malt for all I know. All right. Um, I'm not a big fan of single malts, but yet I did uh, award the Balconis single malt rum cask finish as my best American whiskey of the year 2021. So, hmm, <laughs> goes to show you, I don't know what I'm talking about. This, every time I smell this, I get wet dog. I get wet leather. I get wet suede is what I really get. It's wet suede and wet dog. I do not like the smell of this. The taste, not bad. The smell absolutely puts me off. All right, so let's try this. So our barrel pick. Oh, by the way, this little thing here was on the back. <laughs> I pulled it off and replaced it. So someone on the um, on the um, bottling line didn't really pay attention. Um, second thing, this has 700 milliliters on it. Do they really, I hope, do they really have 700, and, 700 milliliter bottles and 750? Because in Europe we need 700. And I have heard of some brands actually using their 750 milliliter uh, bottles and filling them up and just labeling them as 700. Ooh, who knows? Who knows? All right. So, but a very nice bottle design, um, iconic, very recognizable, very good. And here, the true Northwest. This is this is glass just made for them. So who knows if they're going to have any type of supply chain issues in the future here. All right, so we have the basic bottle everywhere, and we just put a new label and sicker on it. This is actually real copper. Um, it's real metal. They just have some type of adhesive in the back, and very, very nicely done with that, I must admit. Um, a tiny little bit of leakage. You can see that here, a little bit stained. So um, somehow in the transport, it might have been kept upside down too long or whatever, a little bit seeped out here. It's a fairly tight cork, um, but still... Um, that shrink capsule was a tiny little bit, somehow a little bit got out. Ah, don't worry. All right, so let's try it, 62.5%. Absolutely drinkable. A little bit of heat, a little bit of that nice barley sugar. A little bit of a honey, a little bit of an iced tea moment here without much sugar. Um, it's nice. And then it's gone. <laughs> There's hardly any really um, aftertaste here. A little bit, but not much. What a shame. Now, this is still one of the better single malts I've ever had from America. I am not kidding that I've had not some great products in my life. But this is something very interesting. Would I be willing to pay 85 uh, euros for this bottle again? Never, ever, ever. If I had to go buy one, it would be the Pinot Noir. That's the best one out there. But 80 euros for this. 45% uh, Pinot Noir. Nice um, red wine taste. This, for the 5 euros more, I might have to go buy this instead. But would I buy either of these? No. I would buy a Booker's and a Knob Creek 9-year-old for the price of this one bottle. And I'd be a very, very happy camper. <laughs> so, in comparison, the 45% from the wet suede, the wet dog moment here from Westward. Ah. 
I can hear there's a pressure difference. I can hear it like like you have a um, um, a screw cap and it's not really closed on something that's carbonated and it's like I can hear this. So there's a little bit more of a pressure and actually um, the air wants to escape and if the air can escape, I guess liquid can escape as well. It's up. Um, it tastes much better. There's a herbal grassiness to this, which I'm just not a big fan of. This does a, a, um, remind me a tiny little bit of a of a, of a, a Loch um what Loch Lessie Loch Glen Lossie Glen Lossie, um, but still it's not. That's what it call it's called, isn't it? Glen Lossie? Yep, Glen Lossie. Glen Lossie also has a little bit of a you get the flora and fauna and so on. Um, a little bit of a grassy moment there. <clears throat> Not my cup of tea. This I could drink. Now you can put water in it. The only thing with water, it falls apart a little bit. I prefer it at the 62.5%. It gets a little bit more of a bitterness, a little bit of like a of a walnut um, skin bitterness going on here. This is riding around a D plus C minus. This is a C minus going up to a C on a good day. Value for money, D. It's Germany exclusive. I have no idea how many bottles we have. It says here on my nice little thing, I have bottle number five and it's three digits. So I would expect about 180 to 220. So let's say 200 bottles here. Um, who knows? Unfortunately, there was no count here, but yeah, Patty, good job in picking out what you had to choose from, um, but this is still not my wheelhouse. So, question of the day is, what whiskey distillery from the West Coast? All right, could be uh, Washington, could be Oregon, could be California, West Coast. Uh, do you really, really like? Which West Coast distillery do you really, really like? Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, telling others, and maybe even sharing. All the best, our German store pick. Yay! Thank you, Westward. Bye-bye.